what's up everybody welcome to another episode of turtles love pizzas this is the podcast where we just go over all the ninja turtle movies and it's going to be leading up to teenage mutant ninja turtles the last ronin it's a new comic book series that's coming out and that's where we're going to end this particular podcast mini series today i have who with me this is andrew What's up, Andrew? How's it going, man? Good. (laughs) Living life. So uh, today we're going to be talking about another Ninja Turtles movie. So we've already watched the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Then we watched the sequel. And this is the movie that caps off the original trilogy. Andrew, what's the title? (laughs) Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Oh, is there any subscripts? There is no subscript. It is literally just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Before we continue, though, do you know what the... What, what is that? Not the slogan, but the logline is? Uh, let me see here. It's on the poster. <laughs> the turtles are back in time. Oh, snap. Yep. It is ridiculous. Yes, it is. So before we get into it, let, let's go into a little bit of history uh, between me and you, how we watched it, how many, you know, when, when was the first time? And now I remember the first two times for you have been in theaters with your fa- with your mom, right? Or your family. Yeah, with my mom. My mom. With your mom. <laughs> okay. So tell me a little bit about this one. This one also in the theaters with my mom. <laughs> oh no! Because uh, at that time she was the only one taking me to the movies. Okay. It came out around my birthday, so obviously I was gonna go for my birthday. Oh, it came uh, out on your birthday again? Or around there, yeah. Like March nineteenth is when it came out, nineteen ninety three. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't say your actual birthday. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Keep so going. yeah, so you know it's another birthday movie for me. So okay, so. On this one, before we get into how you feel about it now, what were your recollections of it then? Was this? I think I remember. I really liked that there was a little Asian kid in there. Like I remember, like I was like, I want to be that Yoshi guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I that's. I think that's what I remember the most. Is like, I was like, oh cool. There's a little Asian boy like me in this movie. Uh Um, and then I actually, I like, you know, doing research for today's podcast, I was like, (laughs) I wonder who this guy is. He's actually like a little Korean kid. And I was like, yeah, he's Korean. What's his name? Uh, let me find it again. Oh, Travis A. Moon. Yeah. Yoshi. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So I was like, oh, this is a Korean kid like me now. I was like, dang, I could have been in this movie. I could have done better than that kid. Well... He was, I don't know. Yeah, he didn't really do anything. Like, he's not in there. <laughs> I mean, he's in there enough. I, okay, okay. Well, if you don't In mind, there more than you or me. Well, of course, yeah. Oh, by the way, did you ever go to... What? You remember back in the day, I think they used to have live Ninja Turtle, uh, you know, costumed folks at... Is it Disney World? Was it Disney World? Probably Universal. Oh, I think it was Universal. Did you ever do that? Like, go see them? No, my parents didn't take me to those kinds of places growing up. Oh, okay, okay. I was not as privileged as uh, some people. Oh, I have no idea who you're talking about, but let's continue (laughs) to talk about the movie. (laughs) But, yeah, really really quick. um, So my first interaction with this film was always on VHS. I think all three of my viewing experiences have been VHS at home. And this particular movie, I remember because I was sick and my mom, my parents rented it for me. And I remember watching it and loving it. Okay. So right now we, we have our initial reactions to the film. Now let's go from past to the present and then let's break it down a little bit okay so andrew what what are your thoughts on this movie it was bad (laughs) it was michael bay's version of teenage mutant ninja turtles bad that's what it was because it fell into the same exact like pitfall 
which is it focused way too much on the humans. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then also like the quality of the suits that the oh. they were for the turtles yeah. was so bad because they this is when they got away from Jim Henson. Well, and, are you serious? Yeah, you... Jim Henson did not do the suits for this, oh. so you can tell like the decline in quality because like I was watching oh. Splinter. Mm-hmm. You never see Splinter from the waist down. <laughs> you always see him from like the waist up and always like in a box. Yeah. Because yeah, he's yeah. totally just a puppet. And like they did not have like the advanced puppetry of Jim Henson. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous to just kind of see all this. Yeah. And, and especially since the voice work is different too. Like Splinter's voice is terrible in this movie. Yeah. I mean, but they did get some of the original voice cast back. Oh, three of them, actually. Yeah, because, like, Donnie's voice was the same. Mm -hmm. Leo's voice has been the same, like, this entire time. Yeah. And then, was it Raphael's? No, Michelangelo. Michelangelo was the same. Yeah, Michelangelo Michelangelo is the same. They got Corey Feldman back. Yeah. And, okay, so I'm going to say as well, this, this movie is a disaster. You could tell by... Just the the scenes in Japan at the beginning, they made they made no sense to me. And then, okay, what I love about the first two Ninja Turtle movies is when the turtles finally appear, it's always to their theme song, right? Yeah. And I love that theme song, but they start with a what? What do they start with? It it was like a I don't know. It was a hip hip like. A modern day track or something yeah and it at the very beginning you already feel like it's a completely different movie they come out dancing yeah because normally don't they start out fighting usually that was the other thing the fighting in this was horrible oh 100 percent. it was like the worst i was like what are y'all doing yeah and 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 all the human characters kind of suck in this, especially except for I would say Stuart Wilson, the 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 English Walker dude. He was kind of the most interesting dude. He was so annoying, though. Yeah, he's. I mean, out of everyone, he had the most. What is that? Not drive, but he had a purpose. He had too many uh, lines, in my opinion. Like he was just. There was just too much of him. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Like, there's too much focus on him and his character. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't care about him. No one cares about (laughs) him. They care about the turtles. But, like, it might as well have just been Walker's movie because, like, that's all he ever did. Yeah, that's true. And then, like, uh, what's his... uh, Casey Jones playing two different characters. Yeah, but but the British version of Casey Jones, Wit, doesn't do anything. He just... Yeah, there's really no point in having him in there. Yeah, except to show, hey, there's parallels between now and then. And maybe it's some kind of reincarnation thing. Yeah, I have no idea why he was in there like that. It made literally no sense. I do have to say, he looks much better with short hair and a goatee than he does with long long locks. Does he? I, I, I don't know, but... You know what? I really missed Elias Coteus in the first, uh, in the second movie. So yeah, I'm he was definitely just, missing. Yeah, I'm just kind of glad he's back. But this story is just terrible. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so before we get into it, spoiler alerts, Andrew, do you mind just like giving us kind of a breakdown of what happens during the movie? Yeah. So the turtles. Mm-hmm having defeated Shredder in the second movie, yep. are now just, like, lazy and chilling. Like, they're just having a good old time down there in the sewers yeah. in, like, the abandoned train station that they found. Yep. And meanwhile, back in the past in Japan, uh, like what, he's, like, a prince or something. He's, like, trying to marry the rebel leader who's yeah. a lady. And he gets caught, and uh, he, like, finds some relic from his pat from his ancestors that magically makes him switch places with april who was supposed to go on vacation yeah and i guess her, her vacation is now to feudal japan <laughs> yeah um and so the turtles go back in time to go save her mm-hmm. and also save japan 
which they were prophesized to do because they're like the Kappa or the um, the, the monsters. Beast. Yeah, some sort of weird. They're, they're the which beast. made me wonder, like, if they were planning to do a fourth movie where they like go back further in time to be like the people of the prophecy because they've like defeated the Shogun's ancestors. So then yeah. there's like another movie that so it just keeps like getting super meta on itself, but. <laughs> Uh, they kind of canceled everything after this one because it was such a just crapshoot. Yeah, this is, yeah, totally a disappointment. And then there's like, okay, there's like these romantic subplots throughout the movie that make no sense. Now, when I think back on this movie, I realized that in my head, I was filling in the gaps. Do you, do you ever feel like you do that with a movie? You remember it was better than it actually was because maybe you're filling in the gaps you know what I mean? Uh, we've already established that you do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what about you? Did you not do that? No, I just watched the movie. Oh, my gosh. Because for some reason... Okay, so there's a there's a love interest. Uh, Mitsu is her name. And she's played by Vivian Wu, who is a Chinese movie actress, not a Japanese movie actress. But so I remember Vi- her from uh, Vanishing Sun. What's Van- what? What's Vanishing you never, you, Sun? You never watched Vanishing Sun? No. Vanishing Sun was on uh, the Action Pack. It was like I think it was on CBS. It uh-huh. was on at night. It was like Friday night movies, basically. Uh-huh. They did like a Smoking the Bandit um, reboot and like all this other. Anyways, Vanishing <laughs> Sun had a uh, Russell Wong as the uh, lead actor, uh-huh. who was uh, a refugee from China. Uh-huh. He was protesting at Tiananmen Square, okay. and he got like busted, and then he ended up back in in America. And then it was like this amazing like movie. Or first it was like a movie, uh-huh. then they turned it into a sh- a show, and like a series of like TV movies. Okay, where it's like it's kind of like kung fu, where like you have like the Asian guy wandering through America, uh-huh. but he's like this refu- this Chinese refugee trying to make it through America, trying to like shake like the past basically and like do yeah. good deeds as he's going along uh-huh. it was an amazing show honestly like you liked it vanishing sun was amazing like that was one of like the first like asian american like positive roles that you would see like in a good way because it was actually dramatic it wasn't like campy and cheesy mm-hmm. so um, it was it, like serious it was kind of a serious it was serious it, it, it got real like vanishing sun I really want to watch it again. Um, <laughs> Where can we like, find it? I don't know. Like, this yeah. So how... there's Vanishing one through four, and then there yeah. was 13 episodes for the series. Oh, it's on NBC.com. Oh, is it? And then yeah. I remember his love interest was the girl from like the Noxima commercials. Oh, <laughs> Noxima, dude. I haven't seen, dude. Russell Wong was so awesome. I remember him in Romeo Must Die, and I was like, oh, dude, this guy is legit, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, but like this is before that. No, 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 for sure. This is when he was still young. <laughs> you, know, you know what's sad is that we're talking about this when we should be talking about Ninja Turtles. That's how bad this movie is. <laughs> Seriously. No, but you need to go find Vanishing Sun. Anyone that's listening <laughs> to this, if you haven't seen Vanishing Sun, go watch at least the first one. It was amazing. All right. I, I did find it on NBC.com. I want to click on it, but I don't want it to interfere with our recording. <laughs> but I'm going to check it out like right after we finish recording. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, you know, you know who? OK, OK. So back to it. Mitsu. For some reason, I thought there was a lot more chemistry between Mikey and Mitsu when I was a kid. But when I saw it this time, they barely talked to each other. That is true. Like. Yeah, I never understood why Mikey wanted to stay behind for Mitsu. Exactly. Because, honestly, there's this one part when he gets at her, uh, gets mad at her, and he's like, Mitsu, is that true? And then she she looks really embarrassed. I I forgot what it was about. I think um, they were trying to create a plan or something. It doesn't matter. But nothing is established enough for Mitsu and Mikey to have a romance. Yeah. And I do think that Raf and Yoshi, that relationship makes sense because he kind of always wants to be an older brother throughout the movie, throughout the movie series, too. So it's kind of like 
hit a uh, like a catharsis for him that he meets this little kid. Yeah. But still, it's not a lot. I thought Donatello was more well rounded because he he got to do a lot of science and computer stuff. That's this is like the first time you really. I mean, because like second movie you kind of saw it with him working with a scientist, but yeah, this is like him really actually doing stuff. Yeah, like on his own. And then, but Leo was like nothing in this movie. Yeah, Leo has no position. I I don't even think he leads them in any case. Yeah, he really. I mean, because most of this movie was focused on the human characters, and so yeah, the turtles kind of got shoved to the background, basically. Yeah, that's true. And 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 what what's the human character? April. <laughs> I mean, most of it was Walker. I mean, if you watch the movie, most of it is Walker. Like, oh, audience scheming this entire movie. Yeah, but okay. By the way, Lord Norinaga, so the Shogun warrior. Do you? <laughs> does he look familiar to you? A little bit. What's he from? Have you seen the big hit? Uh, yeah, a long time ago. Okay, you remember the the mob, the Yakuza mob boss? Uh, no. he he does the trace busta busta. Okay. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Oh. And, uh, yeah, he, he, okay, when he did the big hit, he hammed it up like crazy, and he was great in it. But this one, he should have hammed it up and had a lot more fun. But the problem is, they gave all the fun to Walker. So, I see where you're getting at with the whole Walker thing. Yeah, like, Walker took over the entire movie. Yeah, I, I agree. And if they had get, if they had taken Walker out completely, and just had Lord Norinaga just hamming it up the whole time i i think you get rid of one miscellaneous character and you just strengthen another one i think that would have helped a lot more i mean i think the only reason why he's there is because they needed them to speak english (laughs) because it wouldn't have made any sense for them to go to feudal japan and then all of a sudden they miraculously know english yeah that is true like i mean i understand the purpose of his character like yeah he's he's the one that's supposed to speak english and like Therefore, since he knows English, all these other people know English, but uh, uh, right. I think they just overwrote his character. I gotcha. I see what you mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, it made sense for him to be there. It was just kind of like a little too much of him, though. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. But, I mean, he he tends to play these kinds of roles. Like, he was in... Mask of Zorro? Is it Mask of Zorro? Or Mar Yeah, the Mask of Zorro. Where he he plays these really bad English people. <laughs> so I you know, he probably got typecasted too, so that kind of stuff. I mean, he was in Lethal Weapon 3. Oh <laughs> The he Rock. Was? Yeah. I'm looking at his uh filmography right now. Yeah. He was in Hot Fuzz. I'm sure he was a bad guy there too. Yeah, pretty sure. And Grindhouse, come on, Grindhouse, he, he's got to be bad in that one too. Yeah. But yeah, overall, man, this <laughs> this movie is trash. And it totally is. Like I, from, I mean, I don't. Is there any part of this movie that kind of like saves it for you? Okay. Oh yeah, that that's right. And I should have taken notes about this, so I don't know if you hear me clacking away on my keyboard. But I'm going on IMDb because there are some pretty good quotes. Oh, there's one where uh, I think Donatello gets knocked down, and he's like, "I'm a turtle, and I can't get up." For some reason, that quote always resonated with me, and I always said it for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. Were there any memorable quotes to you? I don't know if you remember. I remember as a kid, like the most memorable thing to me was like when they shoot the cannon at the bell and then Norinaga oh. like stands up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. And then <laughs> his hair's all smashed up. Yeah. Because let's be honest, that guy died. <laughs> yeah, he sh- totally should have been dead. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, actually, when you go on IMDb, it does have it does have a subtitle. It's the Sacred Scroll of Death. Which makes no sense. Okay, that's probably from, like, something else. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's literally, like, the only scroll is, like, the the prophecy of the turtles. Oh, you're right. I was thinking the scepter. Like, they should have done something with the scepter instead of the scroll. Yeah, I mean, so for me, the only part that I liked the most was seeing the uh, 
the honor guard in America, like in present time. Yeah. Like their interaction with everything was hilarious. Like their obsession with like hockey and like yeah. that was like the fun part of the movie was like like hockey, hockey, and they're like trying yeah. to like play and hockey. Then, and, and then he's like, "All right, let's play some hockey, Casey Jones." And then they all just start beating each other up. Yep. So yeah, I I, I think that I do think the fish out of water is kind of fun to watch for the for the Japanese characters in America, but it's too little you know what i mean yeah i mean i really i just i honestly feel like they really just wanted to run with the english characters for some reason yeah because and then what what what's the son's name the the son of the shogun what was his name Uh, i forget his name crap it's not kenshin right yeah it's kenshin something like that okay well Yeah, the thing with him... Yeah, Kenshin, is, that was his name. It's Kenshin, yeah. right? Yeah, it's Kenshin. So, But not like him, Roroni Kenshin. Yeah, yeah, These yeah I know. These are some generic Japanese names. Norinaga, yeah. Kenshin, Yoshi. Yoshi, yeah. Hey, I'm clicking on Travis A. Moon right now. I'm going to see if he's in... Nope, no other movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to like see like what he's up to <laughs> now and nothing. Yeah. Man, what was I going to say about Kenshin? Like... Number one, they don't establish his relationship with Mitsu, so you don't really care. (laughs) And then in America, he doesn't do anything except be a petulant child. Pretty much. So you kind of think, oh, maybe he's just a crappy son, number one. And he's going to lose all of his inheritance or something like that. But at the same time, his father loves him and will bring him back as the prodigal son. it makes no sense. Yep. And then, okay, so here's some here's some quotes. I got some quotes down right, right here. Okay, so I think I swallowed a frog. I hope it wasn't an ancestor. <laughs> oh, yeah, when they uh, come down the garbage chute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this one. Uh, Ohio wasabi, Donatello <laughs> says. And then Raphael says, hello, mustard. And then Donatella says, okay, so my Japanese is a little rusty. Uh, Suzuki, Kawasaki. And Raphael says, how about uh, Sayonara? <laughs> and then he knocks the bad guys out. Ridiculous. I don't know, man. Like, out of all three of these, this is the worst. Oh, absolutely. N- Ninja Turtle 2 is second worst. And you, you, you can't do wrong with the first one at this yeah. point. Like... Every subsequent film after the first one, nothing can get worse. I mean, I mean, everything can get worse. Yeah. No, nothing can be better. Basically, every single, uh, even including the Michael Bay ones, like, I think this is probably the worst one. Out of, oh, even the Michael Bay? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm kind of excited for the next one, like the animated one, because I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember enjoying it. I, I think we watched it at your place in college, because I think you had the DVD, and we were just chilling at your place, and we watched it. Because you had the DVD, right? Yeah, it came out while we were in college. Yeah, but I didn't watch it in theaters. I Did you? Yeah, I, I definitely watched it in theaters. Oh, okay. <laughs> well... We'll talk about that one next week, but <laughs> overall, yeah, this is uh, nothing has improved, and that's crazy how you mentioned that Jim Henson is no longer part of this. Yeah, because I and, and that I think that really just goes to how poor the puppetry was, and like how little they actually cared about the characters. Did they actually? Did they mention why he left, or? Or or Jim Henson, why they switched, uh, why they switched companies for the costumes. I'm pretty and- sure, like it was just because it was cheaper. Oh, because like I see. you know, like they're they're paying a lot more on sets and like costumes for this one than they were for everything else. Oh, everything else is pretty right. basic. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And then, um, okay, well then w- let's just. We have to talk about, like, something's got to be good. <laughs> right? Like I said, the Japanese guys in New York were hilarious. Other than that, though. 
Um, Anything with the turtles is, is kind of where, where I'm getting at. I mean, you could, they were, well, you weren't much of them in the movies. <laughs> is Why there any good think? music? I don't. I don't remember the music. I mean, it, this yeah. one was pretty forgettable. Yeah, that's true. Oh, like, they did have that one song where they're at the the Japanese guys are at the bar and they're <laughs> and they're ready to go, and they're playing this one song. I really liked the song when I was a kid. I don't remember what it was called, but. I just remember one of the Japanese guys is hugging Casey Jones, doesn't want to leave. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're you're right. Like the Japanese guys in America in present day is the best because remember when he first turns on the TV? Oh, yeah. And then yeah. like thinking it's like a, a witch or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're right. That, I mean, that's pretty much it. I, I did kind of like Raph. Uh, with the kid and they're you know they're flying the kite yeah i wish they had done a little bit more there yeah they could have. i really wonder if there's like a director's cut of this that like <laughs> had more character development for the turtles yeah because i feel like you know like like with michelangelo like and mitsu like there has to be have been more and maybe it just got cut out and and that's Same thing the, with like raf yeah and that's the thing too for me because I think what happened when I was a kid and I was watching all this love stuff, I was making stuff up in my head. Because you're a romantic. Yeah, and I was establishing the relationship. But watching it now, I was just like, oh, wow. There's, we there need, is we no need the moment. Stuart Gillard cut of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. <laughs> yeah, Maybe it will redeem it. <laughs> I wish one day they, they could just uh, have a device where they plug it in your brain and it just shoots out the images. Actually, no, that would not be good. That, no. Yeah, not, not with my head. Not with my brain. Man, this might be our shortest episode ever. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, there's really not a whole lot to talk about. It was... Uh, They're supposed to do, actually, a fourth one after this one, before the CGI one. Oh, really? What, yeah. Um, did it actually mention what it was about? It was... Uh, so, apparently, they took the idea for the fourth one mm-hmm. and turned it into the TV show. TV show? Yeah, do you remember there's a live-action series called Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation? Oh, it's and the they, one with uh, the sister, right? Or girl? Yeah, they introduced Venus. Oh, okay, okay. Venus de Milo as, like, the fifth turtle. <laughs> that just sounds terrible, but okay. Yeah. So, yeah. that's what the movie was supposed to be. Like yeah, a lot of the ideas from this were supposed to be in the fourth, because it was literally going to be called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the next the new mutation, mm. and like and, Peter Laird like released some like sketches about it. Oh, I see. And then, so if that's the case, like, did you watch that miniseries? Oh, and I then, did. How? They had like a crossover with the Power Rangers. It was really weird. Was it good though? Like, was the show pretty? Oh, good? It was horrible. Oh, it was <laughs> absolutely horrible. Oh my god! But you're just one of those fans, right? I mean, you. Yeah, you'll... I'm just one of those fans. Like I've seen most of of TMNT stuff. Like uh, the only things I haven't watched were the TMNT cartoon, uh-huh. the one that came out in the 2000s. Like I just, I mean, I was in college. I didn't have time to watch that. Yeah. And then I haven't watched this new series that's on Nickelodeon right now. I, I don't know, man. I'm I'm looking at the animation and it looks pretty legit. Like it looks fun. Which one? The the one you're talking about, like the newest one. Oh, I don't know. I I watched the first episode. Wait, and where? it just didn't capture me. Um on uh Paramount Plus. What? Okay. Did you subscribe or did you get that free trial? Oh, I got suckered in with like No. Pay fifty dollars and you get a one year subscription. So oh. I was like, hey, let's give it a shot. <laughs> and then I'm like, um, this really hasn't been worth it so far. Because the stuff I wanted to watch is not on there. Wait, wait what? Why? Like, it doesn't release till later? Yeah, like, there really isn't like a whole lot of selection. Like The only thing that I watched really on there was like the um, A Quiet Place 2. Oh. oh, it's there, huh? Yeah, it's on there. Mm. And then some like nostalgic like nickelodeon stuff like all that oh i and just love i wanted that. to see the new are you afraid of the dark but apparently that's not on there what is that on then uh i don't know oops sorry like netflix has one of them 
And then the sequel, the second part of that one is just, I, I don't know where it is. Oh, I see. So it was a waste of money, except you could possibly watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You just weren't sucked in with the first episode. Yeah, so I might try to give it another shot. Yeah, because you, you normally do, no? Yeah, it just usually takes me. I'm also, I'm just busier now. Yeah, I mean, you do have a baby, so it makes sense. Yeah. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the voice cast and I kind of like I do like Leo's voice uh Ben Schwartz. He he's pretty oh, yeah. cool. No, I, the cast is fine, I think. Maybe the animation's it's fine. It was just like this whole like mystic weapons thing. I don't know. It just didn't do anything for me. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, well, and then also like now Raph is the leader, which Wait, I'm what? Like, yeah, Raph is supposed to be the leader. I think it's cuz everyone likes Raph. You know, yeah. So like for me, that throws me off because like Leo was like one of my favorite characters. Wait, and now he's like some other. He's not in command anymore. Did we ever talk about who your favorite was? So my favorite was always either Leo or Michelangelo. Oh, okay, okay. I think I think when I was a kid, Mike was my favorite. But as I got older, Raph became my favorite. Just because because you were more like Raph. Yeah, like the angry dude. Yeah, I I think Leo became more my favorite as I got older. Oh, cause you, cause you want to be a leader. <laughs> oh, cause I am the leader, son. Cause Donald I remember Pelham. when I was a kid on the playground, we would play Ninja Turtles. Yeah. And then I was always Leo, and this guy was always Raph, cause he was like angsty and crazy. Oh, really? Yeah, and like he would just like go wild, <laughs> like he just like throwing his fists everywhere and just shaking his head like when he was like pretending to fight yeah i was like dude you you need to chill <laughs> that's awesome man and then this other kid i think his he was like donatello who dude that's terrible like no no one no one wants to be donatello because <laughs> he's the nerd right yeah so yeah, I, I I think that's why they had to get someone like Corey Feldman to, yeah. be, to be Donatello. And th- I I don't know if you remember any of the dialogue, but remember when he's when he's programming or trying to find out how the scepter works, and he's talking about a bunch of stuff. He comes out and he's talking about cosine of the derivative. None of it makes any sense, and it's all of supposed to be what is that calculus? I think that's calculus. Yeah, was, something like that. I was sitting there just shaking my head. Oh, as an adult, these these people are so stupid. I can't believe someone wrote this dialogue. So the writer is Stuart Gillard, uh, the writer and director. And looking at his filmography, yeah, he hasn't done much after this one. Oh, he directed a movie called Rocket Man. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. They're they're doing a reboot of that on Disney Plus. Why is it any good? Rocket Man, you never watched that? No. That was a, a classic of mine as a kid. Oh, you liked it? Yeah. You never watched it? No, no, no. What what was so good about it? It was just cool. Like the suit was cool. Oh. The idea of like just a rock because like you know like this is before like everything was CG you know so like yeah. it looked really cool as a kid like watching this guy fly through the air. Ah, uh, I see. I see what you mean. But you know what? You know what I appreciate about I appreciate about this movie. What? It's only ninety six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's say they did do a director's cut and they made it four hours. I think we would blow our heads off, man. This, this, it would not be worth it. That's true. I mean, you could cut a lot of other stuff out and and still make it like less than two hours and. I think I think it could be salvageable if if there really was some more footage of the turtles. So so let's say they cut out like thirty minutes of human characters and added the thirty minutes of just the turtles and the samurai in the fish out of water. I think that would have worked. No more romance. Like we don't need a ninja turtle and a human romance because that's what April is for. You know. Yeah. And a- and April isn't even romantically linked to them. April loves Casey, and there's nowhere in this movie that shows that you know, other than the fact that she looks at Wit with some compassion. Yeah. So 
So they, yeah, I totally agree with you. Pare down all the characters, get rid of the needless romance, and just all right. There's Sab Shimono who plays the the Shogun, whose name is Lord Norinaga. Why have Lord Norinaga in the first place? Have him be some what is that ancestor of Shredder? You know, m- make it so that we know these characters so that we don't have to stretch our imagination and it makes the story so much easier, you know? Yeah. So yeah, they made all these wrong choices and for what? I Okay. So it made money back, which is good. The budget was around 21 million. They made 54.4 million. I mean, if it had just been the turtles, I think they would have made so much more, especially internationally i bet you japan watched this movie and was like these people are idiots i can't believe this is how they see our culture as they're like what happened to all the japanese people yeah Yeah. why do they why do they all speak english but you you know what i'm saying right yeah no i totally understand i mean i think that's always been the problem is like people want to see themselves in movies and so they kind of push aside like the cool characters Mm -hmm. in favor of like the human characters yeah. And like when it comes to like things like Transformers or Ninja Turtles, like I don't care about the humans. <laughs> Who yeah, cares I about know. the humans? Like I, I remember uh like rewatching like old Transformers cartoons and I'm like, mm-hmm. there were humans in this? Like I totally didn't remember them. <laughs> yeah, there's like one or two kids. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, they were there, but no one cared about them. But like if you watch like the Transformers movies, it's like all about Shia LaBeouf at the beginning. I'm like I don't care about Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, like, I care true. about Optimus and Bumblebee and like, and like what's going on with the actual Transformers. Yeah, and and here's the other thing: they're Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Number yeah. one, why not just make them the human characters? Because if you think about it, teenagers have our own their own issues. Not our. I'm not a teenager anymore, but teenagers have their own issues. Now you have all this. LGBTQ, uh, LG, is that right? LGBTQ? Q, you know, all, I, plus. Oh, sorry. I, I, I don't remember all of them. But, you know, you have all these other, you know, racial and then s- all this uh, gender issues that are going on right now that, that can play throughout just the, the turtles being alienated. It, it, it's like taking mutants from the X-Men and using them as your main characters, you know, just because they're turtles doesn't mean that they don't, you can't sympathize with them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, cause that was my biggest gripe about the Michael Bay movies. And now real watching this, it's like the same gripe. Like, yeah, I don't care about the humans. Like I came for the turtles. Yeah. Um, like the humans are cool. They have their place, whatever. But like, I want to see, like, the turtles being the turtles, interacting with each other, interacting with people, fine. Yeah. But, like, this movie was all about the humans. Yeah, and if 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 you want to do a Casey Jones movie, fine. But at least establish the universe, establish the turtles, and then bring in Casey Jones and give him a, uh, what is that, a, you know, a movie on the side. But, I mean, I think there should have been, like, a spinoff of Casey and Raph. I think that would have been great. Dude, that you're so right. That would have been so awesome. What what would be another good one? Maybe uh Michelangelo and April. <laughs> that would have been fun. Yeah. But or, it's like or like yeah, just there's so many other things they could have done. This like I think it was cool that they they that they got these turtles and these samurai outfits. Like that was cool. Yeah. And I think that's what they're going for is like we're just going to go for this image. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll, we'll make a story fit around it. But I think they really just missed the point on the plot. Exactly. And that just, it just, it's doom if you do that. <laughs> yeah, especially if you don't know who your main characters are. Yeah. So. Well, they knew who the main character was. It was Walker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no one cares about Walker because he's yeah, not even so... established. <laughs> Yeah, and the actor that played Walker did did his part. Like Stuart Wilson, he did a great job being Walker. Like, yeah, he was a good bad guy. He was witty as well. Yeah, and and that's something missing from all the other characters except for him and his crew. Like his crew are all idiots. 
they really remind me of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, yes. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I remember I had a Walker toy. Like I had, I had his figure. <laughs> you did? Yeah, I had that. And then I remember like I had the little toy like scepter thing. Oh, I had that too. And there's like a little ball in it. And I was I never understood why there's a little ball in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah. Because you could you could take the lid off and take the ball out. Oh, I yeah, I I could not do that, but was yours yeah. a bigger one or was it like an action was, figure size? It was like action figure size, like it fit in his hand. That's so I man, I wish I remember which one I had, but I had a Ninja Turtles. I think it was I think it was Michelangelo. Because at that time, I would have only bought Michelangelo. Oh, I think I had all four of the turtles, and then I had Walker. Dude, you are... Okay, everyone, Andrew is a true fan of the Ninja Turtles. Dude, I don't have those toys anymore, though. Like, they're all gone. No, I know. You have to make space, right? Oh, no, my parents got rid of all my toys oh. when I was a kid. They're like, you're old enough now, and then but- just tossed them. But you're recollecting, and I, I, I think that's cool. And I'm recollecting more of like the stuff that's coming out right now, like the NECA line. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure NECA will eventually get to TMNT three. Would you and buy it again? What the old the old figures I used to have? No, uh, well, if NECA does it, if NECA does it, probably. I mean, they've been doing a really good job with the 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 sculpts and everything. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, but but the the sculpts yeah. for these would be different. Like they look campy, but I do think it would be cool to get the samurai outfits. I, yeah, I do think that, that that's cool. like the big you know draw to it would be yeah. to do the samurai outfits. I'm still waiting for them to finish like the original team and team movie characters. Like, um, what's his name? Tatsu. Like, I want a Tatsu figure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Ninja Vanish. <laughs> yeah, like Neca has said, like he's he's in the works because uh-huh. they they've done Casey, uh-huh. they've done April. Do you they have... even did they even did Danny? Oh yeah, you have that though, right? Yeah, I have Danny. I I have I ordered April. She's on the way. Um, I can't find Ultimate Casey Jones, the one Dude, you... that actually shows his face. Yeah, they're supposed to be at Walmart, but my Walmart doesn't carry that stuff. Dude, you gotta get that one because he's he's the best. And they even did like uh, Splinter, like uh, Hamato Yoshi and Oroku Saki ones. Really? Which are also I... supposed to be in Walmart, but I haven't found them yet either. So how do, how does it work? They only ship like a uh, limited amount of those action figures. I mean, according to the guy that I talked to, uh-huh. like they don't know what's coming in their shipments. Like NECA just. It's like a blind box for them, and whatever they get in the, the thing, they just kind of put on the shelf. But it's so crazy because how how else do they advertise? You know, like you don't want to go to every single Walmart and try to find the action figure, right? People do like fans that really like this stuff are hardcore. Mm. Like for me, typically I wait for um. NECA to actually put it on their website. Oh, okay. But can you order it off their website? Yeah, they have like very short windows though, like because if you don't order as soon as they post, like mm-hmm. it's gone because really? it sells out like super fast. Because stupid scalpers get on there and like steal everything and then resell it for like twice the value. So yeah. it sucks. And then like I'm part of like Facebook groups and stuff where yeah. people resell stuff, but. It's it's ridiculous, dude. I'm on I'm on the NECA site right now, and they have these really cool looking NECA monsters. Yeah. Have, have you seen these? Yeah. Freaking so, Raph looks dope. He's like Frankenstein. Yeah, I pre-ordered that on Big Bad Toys. Are you serious? Yeah. Dude, Big I'm Bad really, Toy Store. I'm, I'm kind of glad that you have this kind of you you still have this interest. Yeah, Big Bad Toy Store for you. Though I mean, they're not sponsoring anything, but mm-hmm. they uh, you know do the pre-order stuff. So it 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 makes me feel like I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, there's like a whole culture of all this stuff out there. Yeah, because I guess I don't do that many collectibles, but if I could, I w- I would probably do what you did, NECA toys, yeah. or. Or I would do something called Hot Toys, where where they have 
really close to like their models are so close to the actual. Yeah. That I mean, crazy. McFarlane also does a great job for DC stuff. Who? McFarlane. Dude, McFarlane would probably be the way that I go because it's the most affordable. Yeah. Like his are like $20 and they're legit. They look legit too. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, hot toys, they go up to like 500 to a thousand. I'm just like, dude, you're freaking crazy. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's well beyond my budget. Yeah, exactly. My wife would kill me. Hey, before we go, cause uh, we actually hit 46 minutes, which I'm super surprised about. <laughs> cause we talked about other things other than this movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like over 20 minutes of no Ninja Turtles and uh young son, vanishing son. I mean, but okay. Before we go, I really got to get your take. What did you think about the Batman? Like the trailer that came out? It looks really good. Like, I'm really hoping that they stick the landing. Like, my thing with these movies is, like, mm -hmm. everything up to the third act is usually really good. And then they get into the third act and it, it becomes a very typical superhero movie. Right. Like, it's just over the top ending. Like, that's what my gripe about Shang-Chi was. was yeah. It was such a good movie up until that third act. Yes. And then, like, I understood why they had to do it for the third act. But it really just went... <laughs> Full on like superhero movie. Same yeah. thing with um, what's the other movie that I'm thinking of? Black Widow. Um, no, Black Widow kind of did what I thought it would do. Um, it was terrible. <laughs> I thought it was just fun. Like for me, Black Widow was just fun. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. I mean, it wasn't like Thor two. Um, oh, okay, okay. But like even like Suicide Squad. Okay. Like the the first one with uh, David Ayer's one, because yeah. like the first part of the movie was pretty good yeah and then true. like you get into that third act of like with enchant it was enchantress yeah and then and it just it got way too like superhero -y, like at the end and like way too cgi'd and it was just ridiculous yeah and and there was that romantic subplot between her and colonel flag i was just like yeah why do you have to put this melodrama but then yeah, it turns like, out that's not what he wanted in his actual movie. And there's yeah. a da David Ayer cut. <laughs> yeah, I totally want to see the Ayer cut. Because I feel like there's no way he would have made that the movie like that. Because like, his other movies yeah. have not been anything like that. Yeah, his other movies are hardcore, bloody. And just, it would have been something with the Joker causing havoc throughout the city. Probably. Like, and... yeah, because it's just, yeah, but like a lot of these movies, like even like WandaVision, I know you haven't seen the series, but like, right. I feel like it was doing so good. And then at the end of WandaVision, it, it did go super Marvel. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't know that. Like, I, I just don't like how at the end they just go big CGI. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't think they went. To, I mean, WandaVision definitely didn't go like over the top. Yeah, but it definitely like like it felt like a different movie. It, it felt like a different show. Like it didn't feel like mm -hmm. all your other Marvel stuff until the very last episode, and then I was like, oh yeah, I see, I see. Because for some reason, when people think of comic book movies or action, uh, comic book. No, yeah, just comic book movies. They always think, all right, we got to do something bigger and, you know, more, more. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, at the end of the day, you just have to look at a movie like The Dark Knight, right? Number one, The Dark Knight is all character-based. And then at the end, the what it really is is it's Batman and Harvey Dent and Jim Gordon and they're diametrically opposed because you know they're you know they have they're on different pages now because yeah. the Joker manipulated them and it, it it's not really a bang pow wham like fight them up it's not it, it's a character piece yeah, even like the Joker movie, like they they pulled it because like that was why I was wondering about the Joker movie, like yeah, how do you end this, you know? Yeah, and I think they did a great job of it of like making it seem like a big ending, but not like going like full superhero into it. Yeah, 
I see what you mean there too. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, you know, because, like, you look at a movie like Spider-Man that's, like, over the top the entire time. Like, that's yeah. awesome. Like, I love it. That's cool. But, like, when you break the tone of the movie just to get your superhero ending, that's when I'm like, ah, uh, you kind of lost me there. I agree. Well, Andrew, thanks for uh, sitting down and talking with me about uh, the worst Ninja Turtle movie. Yep. I hope it's all uphill from here. Uh... <laughs> there, there's like peaks and valleys okay. like honestly like the, this this upcoming tmnt one that we're gonna do next like it really wasn't my favorite to me it was just kind of bleh oh it was really? just kind of there yeah it wasn't like i didn't like it i didn't hate it it was just kind of there when was the last time you saw it though uh a few years ago it was on netflix okay. and i was like oh i'll rewatch this while i'm uh ironing some clothes and i was like Yep, pretty bland is what I remembered it to be. So it's pretty much that kind of movie, the kind that you can watch in the background and not really care about. So Pretty much. Yeah. All right, well, we'll watch it and we'll come back and see if it's still the case a couple years later. And yeah, um, yeah everyone, we'll talk to you guys next time on Turtles Love Pizza. Yep, Turtles Love Pizza. <laughs> And Andrew, thank you again for uh, going through with going through with this <laughs> this endeavor. Oh, yep. Okay, that's it for now. We'll talk All to right. you all soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.